Okay, let's see if we can talk about mirrors and ray tracing. So, we've got mirrors, and uh, there's some terms that you need to know from mirrors. Here they are. Uh, first of all, these apply to lenses as well. So, let's talk about a term that's convergent. So, convergent, if you ever hear that, that means that light gets focused down by this optical device, like a magnifying lens. Um, so, anytime light goes down to a point, then you're going to talk about it as convergent. Diversion is a complete opposite. Light that hits this thing is going to be spread apart, never coming down to one point. Um, so two terms there. We've got the mirror or lens equation, which is going to be 1 over something called the focal point. That's equal to 1 over the distance of the ob object plus 1 over the, over the distance of the image. You're going to see how that works in just a second. Um, just know that all these values are going to be in distance measurements, and it doesn't matter what the unit is, all of it just cancels out, as long as it's all the same unit. We have something called the magnification, that's going to be how big or small something's going to be compared to its original, that's going to be that ratio of the height of the image compared to the height of the object. Uh, that's also equal to negative, the distance of the image, divided by distance of the object. And once more, you're going to find out what I mean by distance of the image and distance of the object. Um, and depending upon the sign of magnification, you can get a positive or a negative sign there, and that's going to tell you if the image is going to be ups, upright or flipped upside down. Because sometimes when you look through lenses or mirrors, things appear upside down. Okay, the focal length is equal to the center of curvature divided by two, and what we're talking about is we're talking about things that are spherical in nature. And so, for a sphere or for a circle, then it's got a radius of curvature, or in other words, a center of curvature right in the middle. The focal length will be right here, just halfway between the center and the actual piece of the mirror that we're using. So a lot of times we're going to use a mirror that's just going to be a portion of a sphere, and so we would have a center of curvature over here, and the focal length would appear right there. Okay, so. There's more things to talk about. Uh, images can be real or they can be virtual. Real means that you can actually put them onto a piece of paper, and I would have showed you this in class. Most likely, they're going to be inverted from their original. Okay, the uh, the virtual images can only be seen, and those guys are, are going to be upright. Um, we're going to work with concave and convex mirrors. All this means is that if light is coming in, let me use a different color than this. If light's coming into the concave mirror at a horizontal let's say it's like that or like that then if there is a focal point somewhere over there then light should go and be reflected back through that focal point or as close to it as possible okay so for a concave mirror light comes in on a horizontal bounces back through that focal point uh, one of those big mirrors that I have in class you saw the you probably saw the Sun just burn the heck out of a piece of wood that is going to be convergent convex mirrors the other ones kind of like a shield, light comes in and they're going to reflect light away and there's actually going to be a very specific way that they reflect the light because if you trace these lines back through the other side of the mirror where the light actually doesn't go, the way that they reflect should cross over a point over here and that's also going to be a focal point although light never truly goes through it, that's going to be a virtual focal point and uh, you would use that in an equation as negative. And we're, and we're gonna see some of that stuff too. So, quick intro, what our terms are and what our pieces that we're using right now, just mirrors. Um, let's go ahead and do something called ray tracing. So, ray tracing. And this is something that if you're just watching and following along and you're not actually ever gonna do it, um, you're never gonna get it, okay? you actually need to practice ray tracing because a lot of people screw up with it the very first time. So what I want you to do is I want you to actually try to like, you know, go along with this and pause the video if you need to, um, to draw these lines. And so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to draw, or we're, we're going to pick, we're going to pick a mirror because right now we're just working with mirrors. The next video is going to be with lenses. So I'm going to pick a concave mirror. Remember the concave mirror is the one that looks like this. It has light and it's going to, make light go through a focal point that's in front of it. And so on my line here, I'm going to draw my mirror. I'm going to draw it somewhere around here. And the way that I'm going to draw it, you know, you'd think that I would make like this curve mark. I used to do that. I used to actually draw a curve here and do my ray diagrams like that. But I found that if you draw a straight line, that's actually a lot better. Um, and we're going to say this is concave just to tell us what we're looking at. So really what we're looking at is something that looks, that looks like, again, like 
like this. Okay, well, I'm just drawing a straight line because that's actually going to help us out with our with our ray tracing. Um, I'm going to do a focal point, and we're going to put the focal point right here. I'm just going to call it F. And if you remember, the center of curvature is going to be twice the focal point. So that's going to be right out here. Center of curvature. And uh, we also need to place an object. And the, ob the objects that we use in ray tracing, we just make those arrows. Because if you draw the full ray tracing, you're going to see if it's bigger, smaller, or upside down. Um, so I'm going to put that object somewhere like right about... Let's see, well, it be good. Let's put it out here. And so I'm going to put my object out here. And I'm making that a vertical arrow. Okay, we can actually see that it's about half a centimeter, or a half, a fourth of an inch rather, in height. And here are the three lines that you need to draw to figure out where the image will be. And without actually seeing it with the mirror, you're not going to be able to understand what we're really doing. Just trust me, anytime you look into a mirror, you're going to see an image. And that image might be real, it might be virtual, it might be upside down, it might be right side up, it might be larger, it might be smaller. If you're looking into a bathroom mirror, uh, you're looking at an image about the same size as you are, but it's just on the opposite side of the mirror. And here with this concave mirror, we're going to figure out where those images are going to be. So the first line that you're going to do, and all these lines always pass through the top of your object. So the top of the object, it's going to go straight through the center of curvature. Okay, and I'm just going to draw it all the way out here. And what you can imagine is that if you have a circle, and if you drew a line straight through that circle, or to the center of that circle, um, and you hit the edge, it should bounce straight back. And I know, I know that it's not a rounded surface here, but this is still going to help us out. That's the first line. So the first line goes from the top of the object, through the center curvature, and back again. Okay? The second line is going to be horizontal. And I always do this as a second line because it really, it's a lot easier to remember. So I'm going to draw the second line straight through the top of my object. And this line is going to go in and hit my mirror. And if we think about a line that comes in horizontal and hitting a concave mirror, the concave mirror is going to reflect it. And it's going to go through the, the uh, not the center, but the focal point. And so I'm going to line that up as best as I can. Sometimes we're going to be a little bit off, but that's okay. So we're going to make our line go back like that. So our ray comes through the top of the object, goes through, hits through your mirror, goes back through the focal point. That's line number two. All right. Really, you only need two lines, but you know, it's good to check. The last line is going to go from the top of the object, and it's going to go through my focal point. And if you think about it, if a line goes through the focal point and hits the mirror, then when it hits the mirror, it should bounce back horizontal, just like our horizontal one that hit the mirror went through at the focal point. And so if we draw this and bounce it back, then there we go, like so. And what we get is all three lines are sort of crossing right around here. Okay? And if you notice, the top of the object, that's where all three lines started from, all three lines cross right there, that will be the top of our image. And this is not me drawing an arrow pointing at it, this is the actual image itself. So if this was like a person, this would be like an upside down smaller person. Okay, if this were, were the letter R, then it would be an upside down and flipped letter R that's smaller. All right, so what we just found out was that with this concave mirror, if you have an object here that is at a distance outside of the center of curvature, it's gonna create an image right here that if you know if your eye was looking, then your eye would be focusing literally on that image right there. Okay, and that, that would actually make your brain hurt because all these other things your eye is wanting to focus on. So to work the math, what we're saying is, hey, you know, we're using this lens or mirror equation, one over f is equal to one over do plus one over di. And so if we say, hey, what is one over f? What is f? F is going to be, let's just count one, two. Okay, that's just a distance from this mirror. And light actually tra do, does travel through the focal point, so we're going to use a positive number there. That's going to be something that you're going to have to also pick up on. So 1 over f equals 1 over do. What's the distance of the object? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay. Plus 1 over di. And what we have is our di is going to be about 1, 2, 3. Okay. So if we need to solve this for di, I'm going to make... 
this one six go to the other side. All right. Now that's going to equal one over di. Uh, can we can can we take one half minus one six? Let's just make that um, multiply three on top three in the bottom. So three on top three in the bottom is going to be three over six minus one over six, and that's going to give me two over six. Or in other words, one over three. And so we have one over three equaling one over di. Well, what's di got to be? di is equal to three. And what do we see here? di is one, two, three. Okay. Also, we, we can talk about magnification. Our thing appeared smaller, right? So our magnification is equal to the height of the image over the height of the object. Yeah, you know, about half an inch, a little less than half an inch. Um, fourth of an inch, like I said before. It's even smaller than that. Ah, I can't really tell. But we can take negative di over do to figure this out. Well, negative, what's di? di was 3. What was do? do was, well, that was 6, right? So this gives us negative 1 half. And so what, what does this tell us? The magnification is, well, the, the image is half the size of the original object. And that's kind of true right there. Is it flipped upside down? Yeah. So there you go. It's negative one half of the original object flipped upside down. It's also a real image because the light is really going to that place. And you, you might say, like, what? What are you talking about? Well, let's do another concave. And I'll show you what I mean. If we, let's see, we set this one up. Let's set this one up over here. We're gonna make that my, uh, my lens, or not my lens, but my mirror. Again, we're gonna label it concave. Um, I'm gonna say that we have a focal point right here, and we've got our center curvature out here. And I'm gonna put an object right inside here. All right, and that object I'm gonna make relatively small and you'll see why whenever we start drawing these uh, these rays. So go back go back through it. What are our um, what are our rays? We have three. First one's going to be center curvature ray. And I'm going to take my object, pinpoint the top of it, and we'll draw it through the center curvature. It's going to go right there. Okay. Easy one to draw. I'm going to take my green. Try to be consistent. Gonna make this go straight through the top of the object as horizontal as I can get it. And when it hits my mirror, it's gonna go back through the focal point. It's gonna go down here. Okay. Uh, and then I'm gonna use the blue. The blue goes through the focal point, the top of the object. We're getting a little bit messy here, I realize that. That's just ray tracing for you. But the blue's going to go through the top of the object, through the focal point, and once it hits, it's going to go horizontal. So if I can make that really horizontal. Okay. Now, pause for a moment. All three lines cross right here, but all three lines are not crossing at another spot. And here's where the term ray tracing comes in. All these reflections that you see, the center curvature one goes through, bounces straight back. Okay, this over here is actually the uh, trace through of that ray, and we're going to use that same thing. The blue one goes through the focal, through the top, hits right there, and then goes horizontal. And we're going to trace that horizontal one back through the other side of the mirror. Let's check this out. Okay, now that's pretty good. We got a place where they meet. The green one came in at a horizontal and bounced down this way. So we're going to trace the reflection straight through to the other side. And what we're going to see is that these lines kind of come together right over here. Now we're not exactly sure, but we have a rough estimate. And I'm going to say, hey, do my best right there. That is going to be where our image shows up and it's bigger than my objects. Uh, it's on the other side of the mirror, which means we can't project it. This is gonna be a virtual image, most likely. And if we work the math, we can try to figure it out. So, I've got one over F, one over the focal point, one, two, is equal to one over the distance of the object. 
That's just one. Plus, one over the distance of the image, and that's what I'm looking for. So if I move this around, I've got one half minus one. What's one half minus one? Well, that's negative a half, right? And that's equal to one over di. So what does di got to be? Di has to be negative two, okay? And so on my picture, you know, this is one, that's two. Our lines kind of showed up right around here, and this is just due to drawing. Um, we got a pretty decent estimate of where this image is. And so if we keep on running through that, that's, you know, that the math shows up exactly where we need it to be. Um, we can run the magnification. Magnification is negative di over do. Well, what's negative di? Negative negative 2 over do, which was just 1. And that gives me 2. Is my object and my image is a relationship 1 to 2? Yeah, it got bigger. It's not negative, so it's upright. So there you go. So you can trace these lines through in order for this to work out. Now, last example, the video is getting a little bit long, so we'll do one more. Let's just do a, uh, let's do the convex mirror now. And I'm gonna say, let's just do it right here. So right there, this is gonna be my convex mirror. Remember, these are all mirrors, lenses will be in another video. And I'm gonna say, with the convex mirror, the convex mirror is the one where it looks like this. Whoop convex mirror looks like this and the focal length on the other side okay so the focal length is going to be somewhere over here let's just say that the convex mirror has a focal length of one two three so let's call that f and if that's f then the center curvature should be twice that so one two three again that would be my center curvature so this whole thing is a big circle a big sphere like this we're just taking a small chunk out of it and then i'm going to take my object and because i know about convex mirrors i'm going to make this pretty big Okay, so there's my object, pretty huge. Um, we're going to draw our three lines. So the first line, same thing with concave, is gonna to be top of the object straight through to that center curvature and make sure those line up. So I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna to try to make it so that on the other side of my mirror, I have dotted lines. Okay, because the light comes in and it actually bounces off the mirror. Over here, I'm using dotted lines because it's not really over here, it's a mirror. You know, you can't have light on the other side of the mirror, it bounces off. The uh, green line, again, this is our last one, so keep on trying. Um, we're going to make this green line go straight in, and it's going to be bounced back somewhere up here. But the method is that it's going to be bounced back so that you can actually trace it back through the focal point, like so. Okay, so these trace throughs are very, very important. You see how they cross right there already? The last one, top of the object, straight at that focal point, and then the one that's going, that's going towards the focal point, it should bounce back horizontal. So we're going to make that bounce back horizontal. It never really gets to the focal point, but we're going to trace that bounce back on through. So there we go. So right there, that's where my image should be. And again, this isn't me pointing at it. This is the image. The arrow is the image. Here's my objects. Let's make it like a tree if it was a tree. So if that was a tree. Okay, here's my image, which is just a smaller tree. Okay. So just to clarify that the arrows that I'm drawing are not just arrows, they're actually the object and the image. So looking at this, hey, it gets smaller. Again, we're gonna try to work the math. I've got one over F, and one over F is gonna be one, two, three. But you know what, the light never truly went through the focal point, right? So the thing about these virtual focal points that light doesn't really go through for divergent devices, you gotta make them negative. So we'll just go ahead and put negative there. I've got 1 over D, O, the distance of the objects. We're going to say that's, hey, 1, 2. And that's going to be added to the distance of the image, 1 over D, I. And we're going to move this stuff around. So I've got negative 1 third minus 1 half. That's equal to 
1 over d i. All right. Uh, common denominator is about going to be about 6. So we're going to say, hey, that's negative 2 over 6 minus 3 over 6. Uh, negative 2 minus 3 is going to be negative 5. So negative 5 over 6. That's equal to 1 over d i. Well, you know, in order to find d i, we've got 1 over d i is equal to negative 5 over 6. Well, if we flip this, then d i should be equal to negative 6 over 5. Well, that's a little bit more than 1. And that's where my image shows up. Okay. And then if we look at the magnification, magnification is going to be negative d i over d o. Last thing, negative. What was d i? Negative, negative 6 over 5 divided by d o, which was 2. Negatives cancel out. You know what? Let me get me an actual number here. We've got 6 over 5 divided by 2, and that's going to be 0.6. And so what that tells me is that my image is going to be 0.6 or 60% the size of my object. And if I look at it, my object's about an inch, and that's a little more than halfway, right around there. So, perfect. Math works out. And again, these were just for mirrors. So we've got concave mirrors, and we've got convex mirrors. Just remember to draw those lines and trace them through. If you got to go back to the video, do that. All right, that'll help you out.